Welcome to Miss Lovedoll's video on meiosis. What are the chances that you are you? Biologically speaking, that is. Let me put it another way. What are the chances that the exact combination of genes that created you could come together again to create you again? Would you believe the answer depends on a process called meiosis? Meiosis is a weird word for a very important process. Meiosis creates the male and female reproductive cells, the sperm and the egg. But it does so in a way that reduces the number of chromosomes to half of what is found in a regular. In addition, meiosis ensures that the population is diverse. There are over 8 billion different combinations of chromosomes in one person's sperm or egg cells. That's a lot of diversity. So how does this actually happen? First, we have to take a look at chromosomes. Human body cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each pair is a set of homologous chromosomes. This means that chromosome 1 from the egg matches up with chromosome 1 from the sperm. Chromosome 1 from chromosome 3, pardon me, from the egg matches up with chromosome 3 from the sperm, and so on for every single chromosome. It has a matching chromosome from the opposite reproductive cell. But how does this actually happen inside the cell? Well, before meiosis, we have the cell, and inside the cell we have a nucleus, and inside the nucleus, we have our DNA. And when the cell is resting before meiosis, the DNA is loose and uncoiled. It doesn't look like chromosomes. It's just relaxed inside the nucleus. When the DNA is loose and uncoiled, we call it chromatin. To get ready for meiosis, the chromatin condenses and forms chromosomes. In human body cells, imagine that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes inside our nucleus. In addition, each chromosome copies itself. Now, there is no way that I can fit 23 copies of chromosomes inside this little nucleus. But you get the idea. Each chromosome copies itself, and the copied form is called a tetrad, which means four. There are two steps in the meiosis process, meiosis one and meiosis two. In meiosis one, there are four phases. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. For you Twilight fans, you might recognize these words. And since this is meiosis 1, we call this prophase 1, metaphase, pardon me, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. In prophase 1, two main things happen. The first is that the pairs of chromosomes line up or pair up together. They get very close together. The second thing that happens is that the chromosomes exchange genes in a random way. This random exchanging of genes is called crossing over. This is what it looks like. Inside the cell, the tetrads get very close together. To see crossing over, we need to blow up one of our chromosome pairs so we can see what's happening inside. So let's go to another page. 
If we were able to look at a chromosome really closely, we would see that it's actually one chromosome from the male and one chromosome from the female held together in the center by a little area called the centromere. Each individual chromosome also contains genes for different traits for the organism. In this case, we might have a trait for blue eyes on each chromosome. These little squiggles are going to represent the gene. During crossing over, the gene from one chromosome actually switches places with the same gene on the other chromosome. So in this case, we have the gene for blue eyes switching places for the same characteristic eye color, but maybe this is the gene for brown eyes. And what happens is we end up with chromosomes that are not exactly the same. Crossing over recombines or mixes up alleles on the chromosomes. It's random and depends on whether or not the chromosomes are close together and it increases genetic diversity. Crossing over increases the combinations of alleles in the gametes. Without crossing over, the offspring would always inherit all of the many alleles on one of the homologous chromosomes. Now that we've mixed up our genes, or our alleles, the next phase is metaphase. During metaphase, the homologous pairs of chromosomes line up on the equator of the cell. I'm just going to draw three tetrads for the sake of time. Because the spindle fibers attach to each homologous pair randomly, male and female chromosomes are pulled to random sides of the cell and result in a random mixture of chromosomes on either side of the cell. This is another way that meiosis increases the genetic diversity in the offspring. The next phase is anaphase. During anaphase, the homologous chromosomes separate and are pulled to either side of the cell by the spindle fibers. This is what it looks like. Here are our little homologous pairs, and here's the spindle fiber. And you'll notice that they've shortened so that the chromosomes are pulled to the opposite ends of the cell. The last phase of meiosis one is telophase one. During telophase 1, the spindle fibers dissolve and the chromosomes unwind. The nuclear envelope reforms and gradually the cell divides into two new cells. But meiosis is not over yet because the two cells created after meiosis 1 still have a complete set of chromosomes to form gametes or sperm and egg cells the cells need to have one half of the chromosomes of a normal cell. So the cell gets ready to divide again. The second cell division is called meiosis II. During meiosis II, chromosomes, chromosome pairs are separated and gametes are created. So let's take a look at how this happens inside the cell. In meiosis II, there are four phases. Prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. So in prophase 2, the chromosomes condense from the chromatin that was created during prophase, that was created during meiosis 1. It looks like this. First, we have the two cells created by meiosis 1. They each contain chromatin. And during prophase 2, the chromatin is going to condense back into chromosomes. But in this case, unlike prophase 1, 
the chromosomes are not going to copy themselves. Notice that the nuclear membrane has dissolved, and during metaphase two, the chromosomes line themselves up on the equator of each cell. As the spindle fibers shorten, the chromosomes are separated and each chromosome moves to opposite ends of the cell. And you can see during this step how the gametes are created with half the chromosomes of the original cell because only one half of a chromosome goes to either side of each of these cells. So the chromosome, chromosomes are split up. In the last phase of meiosis II, called telophase II, nu the nuclear envelope forms around the chromosomes in all four new cells. It looks a little bit like this. Here's our nuclear envelope. And in each nuclear envelope, we have one half of the original chromosomes. Meiosis results in four cells that have half the DNA of the parent cell. These are the gametes. They can be either sperm for the male or egg for the female. Each one has half the chromosomes of the original cell and has been randomized by the switching of alleles during crossing over and in the way that the spindle fibers attach and this increases genetic diversity. And now you know how meiosis works.